Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation you're bringing. We will be hearers and doers of it and see the fruit of it. <clears throat> in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, if you would. We're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and we're talking about the specific one of love. And today we talked about understanding the fact that God loves us and how His love operates toward us, and also of our love towards Him. We talked about the fact that His love is unconditional in one aspect, but it's also conditional in another aspect. It's unconditional in the fact that man could do nothing to get him out of the situation he was in, so God sent his only son. The Father sent his only son to accomplish the redemption. His unconditional love was shown because he gave his son. Love always gives out. And we also saw the conditional part, though, that the conditions must be met if we're going to see God manifest his love to us once we are born again. You think everybody thinks that he automatically loves them. Well, you're going to find out tonight that it's only to those who love him that he is going to manifest his promises and that he loves those that love him, as you will see. We begin in Deuteronomy 6, verse 5. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. We are to love God we're to put him first place, and we looked at many scriptures today about how we love him. We love him by keeping his commandments, doing what he says, keeping our mind upon his word, his statutes, his testimonies, following his ways, making sure that we're putting his word first place, hating evil, hating vain thoughts, many, many things that we talked about that are important if we are going to follow the Lord and show that he loved, that we really love him. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus spoke of this when he was asked the question about what was the great commandment in verse 36, chapter 22, Matthew, verse 36. He said, Master, what's the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And here this refers to your way of thinking your understanding, your focus, and that's what he wants for every one of us. We are to walk in all of his ways. We see the fact that in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37, he said, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. We can't have any person put before the Lord. We've got to put him first place. We can't compromise for a wife or a husband or son or daughter or mother, father, whoever it might be. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. We must put God first place in everything that we do, and it's going to be shown by our action, by our doing of the Word of God, as we talked about. We also pointed out that the enemy is at work and will continue to be at work to try to get people do not walk in his ways. Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. Because iniquity shall abound. This is an end time chapter. The word iniquity is the word anomia, which means lawlessness. Lawlessness. Because lawlessness will abound. That means it's going to be increasing and abounding, and you see it happening now. And you're going to see it happen more. You think you've seen the end of it abounding? No, it's going to increase. The lawlessness will. Notice what happens. The love of many shall wax cold. Well, that tells you something. Because the word love is agape love. Who has the agape love? Only those who are born again believers, not the world. So, who's this talking about? It's talking about born again believers in the church. The love of the born again believers of many, not just a few, will wax cold. That means they apparently are walking in lawlessness instead of walking in line with the Word of God. We need to put the Word of God first place and be a hearer and a doer of it consistently, following the law of Christ. Of course, a lot of people think that we can just do anything we want now in the New Testament. They fail to understand that we're not under the Old Testament law, but we are under law of the New Testament. Many Christians don't realize that. 
We see, remember, when the covenant was changed and the priesthood was changed, in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 12, for the priesthood being changed, there's made of necessity a change also of the law. Not a doing away of it, a change of it. Now we're under the law of the Spirit, the laws of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And this law is the law of Christ. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, speaks of this. Bury one another's brothers and so fulfill the law of Christ. And this royal, this law is called the royal law that you and I are to walk after. James 2, verse 8. If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, and what is that? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. We are now in the New Testament under the royal law, the law of the commandment that we are to follow after, love our neighbors ourself. In fact, in John chapter 13, we see over in verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you. That means it wasn't here before. That you love one another as I have loved you. And this is agape love that realizes the valuableness, the preciousness, and the worth of an individual. This is a love which gives out to others regardless of what they do. Remember in the Old Testament, they gave out when someone, when they gave something back to them. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, they even gave back evil back. Not in the New Testament now. Doesn't matter what people do. We give out love to everybody. This is the agape love, regardless of what they do. You love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples, if you have love, the agape love, one to another. Every one of us are to walk in the ways of love. And certainly we are to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and be doing what the Word says. And if you love Him, you're going to turn from all sins in your life. We saw this scripture over in Luke chapter 7, talking about this woman. We saw, we come down to verse 47, where it says, Wherefore I say unto you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to, little, to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. That tells you something. The more that we have conquered sin in our life, the more we will operate in love. It would be love towards God, of course, we get rid of all the sin areas. Love towards other people. God wants you to overcome every area of sin, anything of missing the mark in your life. The more, again, that you are forgiven of whatever is not right in your life, you're conquering everything, then the more that you will be walking in the love of God. And we pointed out also that you and I are to love, love Him. And love is not just having an attitude, saying I'm love, my, my, I feel love toward Him, or whatever it might be. No. It's shown by action. John 14, 15, Jesus made this statement. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Otherwise, it's shown by what you do, not just what you say or what you think or what you feel. It's by what you do. It's shown in action. If you love me, keep my commandments. God wants us to keep the commandments of the Lord and walk in love towards him at all times in our life. It is mandatory. We looked at a scripture also today that's important to understand. Many people think that God just automatically loves them and doesn't matter about any conditions. Not so. You'll see this as we go through tonight. And also many people think that, well, th all things are going to work together for my good because I love God. They assume that they love God, so everything's going to work together for good. Well, let's take a look at the scripture in Romans 8, 28. The King James says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. This is the way it is in the word order in the Greek in Young's. And we have known that to those loving God, that's first. You can see it here because this is the word for those loving God. To those loving God, well, that means there is a condition to be met first. 
And who are the ones that love God? The ones that keep his commandments, that walk in his ways, that do what his word says. So they've got to meet the condition. Then it says that all things do work together for good. Otherwise, they're only working together for good if you're doing what he says, because you're putting him in operation. You're walking according to the covenant. You're being obedient to him. We're the call according to his purpose, but all things are not working together for your good automatically. No. They're only working for your good in them as you are loving God, which means you're keeping the commandments and doing the things that he says. At the same time, you've got to understand the devil is out to separate you from the love of God in your life. Romans 8.35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That tells it's a who, that's a person. Somebody's trying to stop you from the love of Christ. He's trying to hinder you in every which way. Tells you all the different things that he uses. Shall tribulation, that's pressure. Remember, that's one of the things that comes to try to take the word out of your heart. Tribulation or affliction, same word. Or distress, afflictions, calamities, situations, circumstances. Try to get your eyes off those, on those things and react to them. Persecution, that's another thing that arises because of the word's sake to try to take the word out of you to stop it from producing fruit. Famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Oh, these are all things that are used in judgments that come against. Well, the devil will try to bring things against you as well. Well, any of these things that the enemy brings against you, can they separate from the love of Christ? As it's written, for thy sake we're killed all the day long. Who views us that way? The devil does. He views you. It says, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. He wants to slaughter you. He wants to destroy you. Remember, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, can we do something about that? Absolutely. No, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. This is a word hypernakao, which means really to gain a surpassing victory. It's not talking about something we are as a noun, as many people have thought, because it's a verb. It's talking about the fact that we are to be conquering, present tense, we are conquering to gain a surpassing victory through him that loved us. Otherwise, God wants you to get the victory over every attack that comes against you. It tries to separate you from the love of Christ, trying to hinder the word of God from working, trying to hinder you from seeing the blessings of God coming forth in your life. I'm persuaded, neither death, nor life, nor angels, or principalities, powers, things present, things to come, height, depth, or any other creatures able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you do what the word says, if you've got your eyes on him and you are involved in conquering the enemies in your life, because you are to conquer. You are to rise up and use your authority and conquer everything that the enemy would bring against you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, another scripture we looked at. Important to see. Verse 8, verse 9 it is. He says, it's written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Notice, it didn't say he's prepared for every Christian. It doesn't say that. He's prepared for them that love him. That means that's the qualifying statement. Well, that's the one who is loving him continually. Present tense. Which means He's keeping his commandments continue. He's keeping the sayings of, of Jesus. He's walking in the word continuously. <clears throat> Otherwise, God has prepared great things for those who are hearing and doing his word that are truly loving him. The key is loving him. And remember, it's shown by your action. It's shown by your works. It's shown by your walk. It's shown by the things you do in your life. That's what he wants. We are to be loving him. And we saw this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the word phileo, one who is affectionate for, because of association this refers to, because he's doing the word, he's a friend of God, he's fond of him, and who's the friend of God? The one who keeps his commandments. If any man is not the friend of God, so to speak, of the Lord Jesus Christ, he's not being that way toward the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. That means let him be accursed. 
he's going to be cursed. God wants us to make sure that we are walking in love at all times. We saw another scripture that we were looking at the very end when we this morning. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, According as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be what? We should be holy and without blame before I'm in love. As we operate in love towards God, keeping His commandments, and we operate in love towards man, so we're always walking right with Him, we're going to be holy. And we're going to be without blame, without blemish, that means. That means God has chosen us even for the beginning, the foundation of the world, those people who will walk in His ways and love Him, those are the ones who are going to be holy and without blame. And that is what you and I are to be. Another scripture we looked at this morning is important for you to see. God is going to find out whether your love is real and genuine and valid or not. 2 Corinthians 2.8, he says, Wherefore, I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. Well, I thought I could just, you know, say that I love him or just have an attitude. No. Confirm your love. What's that mean? That means make it valid. Make it shown that it's the real deal. It's genuine. Make it valid. Well, how am I going to be doing that? For to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things. So what shows that your love is valid? You're obedient in all things. And the proof of you is shown because you are a doer of the word. You're walking after the commandments of God. You're carrying out what the word says in your life. That shows the validity. The validity of, validity of your love is shown in obedience. Not an attitude or a feeling or just thoughts. God wants us to walk in His ways. We see another scripture over in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 8. He said, I speak not by commandment, by occasion of the frowardness of others, and to prove the sincerity or genuineness of your love. God will prove the genuineness of your love. That's because you're going to be doing the things that He says. Down in verse 24, he says, Wherefore show you to them and before the churches the proof of your love. Show this proof of your love, because you're, you're doing the word, you're walking the word. In this case, they were given out to help meet the needs in them. And of our boasting on your behalf, they were boasting about him because he was going forth and ministering to people and helping meet their needs. The proof of your love is going to be shown forth by action. That is what God wants. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it speaks here of the falling away that is going to happen. In verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, talking about the day when the Lord comes in His second coming to catch us up to meet the Lord in the air, gathering unto Him, which is what He talked about back in verse 1, by the coming, this is the parousia, the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathering together unto Him. By the way, this is not talking about two different events. It looks like it, because you've got by the coming and by our gathering, that they could be two different ones. Many people have tried to say, hey, there's two different events here. Trying to say the coming is one thing and the gathering is another. Notice this word by, and yeah, it's there. When I put the cursor over this one, there's no word that comes up below. Notice, it's italicized. Why are words italicized? Because they're not there, the Greek. In other words, there's only one preposition that describes what is said. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto Him, because it's all one event. When we, He comes and we caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And He says, Let no man deceive you by any means for that day, a day when he's coming shall not come, except there come a falling away first. What's the falling away? This is a defection from truth, apostatizing, not walking after the word of God anymore. That is what is coming to those who are not choosing to follow the way of the Lord. This is speaking here to Christians. I'm not talking about the world. They, haven't, they aren't even in the truth to begin with. They don't have anything to defect from or apostatize from. This is talking about Christians who will apostatize and defect and turn away, fall away from truth, forsake it. 
This is going to come first in time, and the man of sin is going to be revealed, the son of perdition. This is the Antichrist. He's going to oppose and exalt himself above all that's called God as worship. He's going to speak against all these things, everything that God speaks for. He's going to be against him. We come down here to verse well, verse 9 says, His coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. That's why you've heard me say many times, and I'll say it many times in the future, never follow signs and wonders and miracles. You follow the Word. Otherwise, you could be deceived because he's going to do signs and wonders and miraculous works. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Otherwise, he's going to say it's okay to do anything that's unrighteous. He's going to be the speaking opposite. He's going to speak against the Most High. It talks about Daniel. And the deceivableness of unrighteous because they receive not the love of the truth, the Word of God, that they, for their being saved, as Young's brings out, it's necessary for you to have the love of the truth walking after the Word of God for being saved. And the deceivableness of unrighteousness as well as those ones that are walking after lawlessness. It means I can do anything I want. It doesn't matter. You even see that now. Anybody, that's, it's coming more and more. People think they can just do anything they want. No. These people are going to be in the fallaway crowd if they don't get themselves right. For this cause, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be judged, is this word, who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Well, they're going to like the idea that you can do anything you want. And this, again, is talking about Christians, remember. This is not talking about the world. Why would they get to this place? Because they didn't have the love of the truth. They didn't put the Word of God first place. They really did not love God by keeping His commandments and following the way of the Lord. And if you don't, you're going to be deceived, the deceivableness of unrighteousness. You're, see, you're either doing righteousness or you're doing unrighteousness. You're, you're not in the middle ground. You're doing one or the other. That's why putting the Word of God first place is absolutely essential. That shows you really love God. Also, we can't be allowing ourselves to have one foot in the things of this world. 1 John 2, 15, look what he says. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's why we got to have the love of the Father, and how because you got your eyes on Him, you got your eyes on the you're seeking the things above. You're not walking after the ways of this world. You don't love the things of this world. This world is a world that is in decay because of sin. It's on its road to perishing. It's going down, and there's not going to be around. Forever, it's going to be eliminated. There's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. All that's in the world, and how does it operate? Through the lust, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. It's not of the Father. It's of the world. Remember, the devil is the fa all this one who is the, the lust of your father. He says, you'll do. He was doing, operating that way from the very beginning, leading people to follow after the lusts. What must be doing? The world's going to pass away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's the one who loves him. The one who's doing the will of God. The word doing, present tense, continuous, repeated action of doing what the word says. Otherwise, the people that get one foot in the world, they're going to be going down. They're going to be easily in the ones that are going to be falling. Because remember, whether you're walking the world of unrighteousness or lawlessness, what happens? The love of many will wax cold. It'll get cold because of the lawlessness. 1 John chapter 4, verse 21. This commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. We must walk in love towards our brother. If we're really loving God, he who is loving God Continually, he is to love his brother, as it says. That he, and it says here that he may be loving his brother, showing that it's not automatic. Just because you love God doesn't mean you love your brother. But if you're really loving God, you'll meet the condition, 
because it's a subjunctive mood of loving your brother and you'll be doing it continually. See, if someone doesn't love their brother, they don't love God. That means you can't have resentment, you can't have bitterness, you can't have hatred, you can't have unforgiveness, you can't hold grudges, you can't have negative attitudes against somebody. Well, you're not loving God. You can only be loving God when you're loving your brother as well. 1 John chapter 5, verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Because we do what his word says. Well, you're not going to have anger towards people because the word says to put away anger. You're not going to be holding bitterness because it says let go of all bitterness. You're not going to be having hatred for someone because if you have hatred in your heart, you're a murderer, you know, and you have no eternal life in you. We're going to keep his commandments. We're going to walk in his ways. We're not going to be unforgiveness towards anybody because we don't forgive. We're not forgiven of our own sins. It means we're abiding in sin. We love God and keep his commandments. That is what he expects. This is the love of God. How do we define it? How do we show it? That we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Again, it's not an attitude, is it? It's not a feeling. It's an action of doing his word. It's all shown by what your lifestyle is. We see this again brought forth in 2 John, verse 6. This is love, that we walk after his commandments. And again, this shows you the condition has to be met. The subjunctive mood, present tense, that we may be continually walking after his commandments. That shows that you're in walking in the love of God. Keeping the commandments of God consistently in your life. Well, if you understand that walking in love is keeping the commandments, then you understand what happened to these guys in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. They left their first love. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. What's to be your first love? The Lord, and how is it shown? By keeping the commandments of God. These guys weren't keeping the commandments of God anymore. They had turned away from it. And notice he says in verse 5, Remember from whence you are fallen, repent and do the first works. Get back and do in the word. It's shown by your action, isn't it? By your works, by what you're doing. Or else I'll come quickly and remove thy candlestick out of this place, except you repent. There's many Christians that have left their first love because they haven't put the word first place in their life. They're not doing the commandments of God. They're just living their own life however they want. You do not have love for God if you don't walk after his commandments. Anybody that's quit walking in line with the word has left the first love. We cannot allow that to happen in our life whatsoever. In fact, John, chapter 15, John that is, chapter 15, look at verse 10, what it says. If you keep my commandments, you, you shall abide in my love. If you're keeping the commandments, you shall continually, this is a future tense, and you will be. The key is keeping the commandments consistently is the way you will always stay in love. Remember, this is a subjunctive mood. If you might keep his commandments, you shall abide in his love. That means you can abide in his love. God wants you to abide in his love. And you will as you keep his commandments. And how did Jesus do this? Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Jesus had to keep the commandments of the Father. In doing so, he was abiding in his love. In like manner, you and I must do the same thing. But what happens if we don't keep his commandments? Well, this is what it says in John 14, 24. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. The word that you hear is not mine. That means if we're not keeping his sayings, that would include his commandments and his sayings, then we're not really loving him. We're not loving him at all. We need, must be loving him by keeping his sayings and carrying out the things that he tells us to do. In fact, you and I are told in Jude, verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. So that, that's not having to do with an attitude or a feeling, does it? Keep yourselves in the love of God. This is a command. How do we keep ourselves in the love of God? By doing His commandments, right? Doing His word. 
doing his sayings, doing what he says. That's a key, looking for or expecting, this means, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. It means his mercy will produce eternal life for you, but who gets it? Only the one who's keeping themselves in the love of God. Which means what? Only the ones who are keeping his commandments, continually walking after his sayings, being a consistent doer of the word of God. That is what he wants. And as you do this, what is God going to do? Remember, we've talked about how we're going on into perfection in our life. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. He said, I know him, and I, he that saith, I know him. Oh, I know the Lord. And keepeth not his commandments. Remember, that's how you show you love him. Present tense. If he's not continually keeping his commandments, God says he's a liar. And the truth is not in him. He's just deceiving himself. He's just saying he's such. It doesn't matter what people say. What's the proof, remember? Obedient in all things. Find out whether you're the real deal and the genuineness and the validity of our love, remember? Oh, I, I know him. You ask any Christian on the street and say, hey, do you know the Lord? Sure, I know the Lord. Do you keep all the commandments of the New Testament? Um... Yeah, they don't know, now they'll, they don't know if they can say yes to that one or not. God says if we're not, we're a liar. The truth is not in us. Look what happens. Whoso keepeth his word, the person who is keeping his word, this has one underneath it, continually. And remember, this is a conditional statement, subjunctive mood. So the way you would look at it more accurately is he who may be continually keeping his word. They're meeting the condition. In him, verily, is the love of God perfected. How are you going to come to perfection? One of the aspects of perfection is the love of God being perfected in you. Love for God, love for, uh, for man, walking in his ways, loving one another. The love of God will be perfected in you in the measure that you're keeping the word consistently in your life. Doing the word, that's the key. That produces the love of God being perfected, and hereby know we that we're in him. You even know that you're abiding in him. God wants us to understand the love of God is keeping his commandments and walking in his ways. Well, what happens if you love him? Now that we've seen the lo loving him is all tied into what you do with his commandments and his word and obedience to him, the proof of it, and you're carrying it out. You're showing the genuineness of it. How about to those that love him? That means you're meeting those conditions. Exodus chapter 20, verse 6. Showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Because he's talking about who are the ones that love him. They keep the commandments. God's mercy will be shown unto you. The mercy of God is the love of God in action. That includes healing, includes deliverance. Remember they're calling out for have mercy on me, son of David. That was the action of the power of God, the healing or the deliverance in order to bring forth the promises in their life. Mercy will come to those that love him. And the ones that love him are meeting the conditions. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 10. Same one. This is the one where he talks about, and he's also back here, he's talking about these iniquity of the forefathers that come three and four generations. But showing mercy to the thousands that love me and keep my commandments again. So those who will not walk after these inherited generational iniquities, that's why you can't walk after your father's sins and be right. You've got to conquer them all. You've got to overcome them all. This is also why you need to cast out all these demons that have come into it. Then he'll show mercy because you're going to be keeping his commandments. You're going to be doing the things that he wants you to do. Deuteronomy 7, verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you are more in number than any people, for you are the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with who? Them that love him. You see this phrase continually, many times. 
and is always telling you who they are, the ones that keep his commandments to a thousand generations. That shows you what God will do. He'll keep his covenant. Your co the covenant promises won't come to pass just because I'm going to pray the right things. And we have to learn how to pray accurately and take hold of it, you know, and accurate New Testament prayer, that's all important. But if you're not keeping, the, keeping his commandments and loving him, it won't happen. You can do all the right things, but if you're not walking in love, keeping the commandments of God, and loving him, then you're not going to see the covenant promises. You're not going to see the mercy of God come to pass in your life. If you love him, God will manifest himself in your life. Look what it says here in Deuteronomy 23, 5. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. You love him, and in the New Testament's walking after his ways, he'll turn those curses into blessings. He'll turn everything around. Because when you keep his commandments, you're going to be doing everything he says. You're going to be dealing with your sins. You're going to be repenting. You're going to be casting out. You're going to be speaking the word. You're going to be praying the word, taking hold of the promises, doing all the things that are necessary to see his blessings come to pass in your life. God will turn the curses into blessings. Otherwise, it's not just casting out only, is it? It's because we're walking in his ways. Deuteronomy 30, verse 16, In that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, keep his commandments and his statutes and judgments, that, here's the blessing, thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God will bless thee in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. God will he'll bless you in the work of your hands, he'll prosper you, he'll bless you, you'll live, you'll multiply. What's the key? Loving the Lord. And how do you do it? You walk in His ways, you keep His commandments. You're doing it. That shows the genuineness of it. It's all shown by what we're walking after. Judges, chapter 5, verse 31. So let all thy enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love Him be as the Son when he goeth forth in his might. Oh, that means those that love him, they're going to be like the sun or like the light, you know. He goes forth in his might. And he's, he's the one that fights the battle. Remember, the battle's the Lord's and the victory's ours to smite the enemies. And so the ones that loved him, that there is the sun, that means they're walking in the light. They're not walking in darkness. When he goes forth in his might, well, they're going to be the ones that are going to see God bring victory over their enemies. And that happened, and the land had rest 40 years. God wants us to have rest from our enemies by driving them out. But for those that love him are going to see it come to pass. We come over to Nehemiah 1, verse 5. I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for who? Again, that phrase, for them that love him and observe his commandments. He understood that. They said this many times in the Old Testament. They understood. God, covenant and mercy will be manifest and will be kept for those that love Him. There's the conditions. Those that could love Him, not automatically just because He gave it. A promise. Psalms 31. Psalms 31, verse 23. Oh, love the Lord, all you saints. That's our job. Holy ones. If you love them, you're going to be holy. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer because you're going to be faithful and you're going to be doing the word. What's he going to do? He's going to preserve you. This means he's going to watch over you. It's the word not sar, which really means not so much guard, but more he's going to watch over you. God, his eye will be upon you. He'll be watching over you because you're going to be faithful to do what he says. And he re plentifully rewards the proud doer. And this is interesting. This word here means the one who's in covenant with him. Shalom. He's going to plentifully reward those ones that are in covenant with him. He's going to bring his covenant promises to pass. Because you're a doer of the word of God. That's because you're a saint, remember. You're a holy one. Loving the Lord who's walking in his ways. 
Psalms 91. Psalms 91, a tremendous psalm, talks about a lot of things, but we come down to the end and it says, verse 14, because he hath set his love upon me, you set your love upon him. How? By walking his ways, keeping his commandments, doing what he says, keeping his sayings. Therefore will I deliver him, and I will set him on high because he's known my name. Otherwise, deliverance is tied into you setting your love upon him. Again, as we've said this many times, and we'll say it many times, it's the whole package. People that just want to get the demons cast out and get delivered of the thing, and they haven't set their love on them to keep the commandments and walk in all his ways, they're going nowhere. They will not get delivered. This is the condition, because he set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. God will deliver those who will walk in all of his ways. Psalms 97, verse 10. Ye that love the Lord, hate evil. You've got to hate evil. If you hate evil, you won't walk in it. You won't walk in ways that are sinful. You hate anything that's, that's not of God. You should hate unrighteousness, hate lawlessness, hate any kind of lustful sins, any kind of these things. You want to hate these things. Notice what it says. He preserves the souls of his saints because those are going to be the ones of the holy, godly, faithful ones. And he delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Again, this is all tied into your being guarded. This, is the, this time the word preserve is shamar, meaning guarded. He'll guard you, guard the soul. That means you aren't going to get all these getting beat up in the area of the soul because you're walking in holiness. And he's going to deliver you out of the hand of the wicked. Well, that means you're being guarded and your deliverance is all, again, tied into loving the Lord, which is going to be shown because you hate evil. That means if you hate evil, you, it's not going to get a hold of you whatsoever. You have nothing to let any kind of evil get a hold of you. And that would be anything that's contrary to his word. Psalms 119, this is the tremendous things that happen to those that love him, who've met the conditions. Verse 165, great peace have they which love thy law. Of course, if you love him, you're going to love his word. Do it. What's going to happen? You're going to have great peace. And this is the word shalom, which means more than just talking about peace of mind. This is the word that means completeness, soundness, welfare, it also refers to safety, health, prosperity. Yeah, that's blessings across the board. God wants you to have all of the blessings of God coming. Great peace, much of all this. Prosperity, health, blessings, those that love thy law. And notice what else. Nothing shall offend them. Nothing will trip you up because you got the word first place. If you're loving the word of God and you're walking after his commandments and doing what he says, you're not going to walk in sin. That's how you can conquer all sin in your life. Just get the word before you. People that are having problems with, oh, this sin, this keeps on pulling me down. Well, obviously, you don't have the word set in you. You're not hearing and doing the word consistently. And otherwise, you wouldn't be given place to this thing. Nothing shall cause you to stumble. That's what this means. No stumbling in you whatsoever. Because you are going to walk in the ways of the Lord. Psalms 122 is an interesting statement here. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They that prosper shall love thee. Pray for the completeness of what, what does Jerusalem mean? Yes, we do that in the natural, in a sense, for them. But this is what it really is talking about because the Jerusalem is the teaching of peace. That's what it means. You pray for the completeness of the teaching of peace, what's going to happen? It's going to bring you to maturity. It's going to bring you to the place of walking in the ways of the Lord. They'll prosper that love thee because you love the teaching of peace. You love the word of God. Jerusalem's also the place where they come to rule and reign. Remember, they came out of Babylon and went to Jerusalem. They came out of captivity and went to the place where they were in victory and ruling and reigning and saw the blessings. That's what this speaks of. This is true in the sense of a, a natural truth, but it also has a spiritual application. Though they shall prosper that love thee and 
Those that are loving him, of course, are going to walk in line with his word. They're going to hearken to the teaching of peace. That's what Jerusalem means, the teaching of peace that comes forth. Psalms 145, verse 20. The Lord preserveth all them that love him. All means all. That means he'll guard you. He'll protect you, shamar. But all the wicked will he destroy. <laughs> they're going to get wiped out. Those that love him, though, will be guarded. Why? Because they're walking his ways. They're not walking in sin. They're not giving place to the devil. They're hating evil. They're walking uprightly. They're doers of the word. They're not walking in unrighteousness or lawlessness or giving place to lust or any of these kinds of things. It all comes down to loving him. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 6. Remember, that was the great, great commandment of the law. Proverbs 4, 6, talking about the word of God, getting wisdom and understanding, not declining from the words of my mouth. In verse 5, forsake her not, for she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee, watch over thee. Again, what are we to do? We're to not forsake the word. We're to love the word. We're to get wisdom, understanding, and not decline from his words. It all comes down to what you do with the word of God, is whether you love God or not. Now remember, we mentioned that love is unconditional in some aspects, but it's also conditional in other aspects. His love is not manifesting to every Christian. And this is a very clear statement. Proverbs 8, 17. I love them that love me. This is talking about him loving you in a way where he would manifest himself towards you and show you favor, bring his mercy, whatever it might be. Remember, he loved us in an unconditional way in sending Jesus to do something about man's state. This is talking about someone who's really coming into relationship with him because who's going to love him? Only those that come in relationship with him, right? Not the world. He loved us first that we would respond with love. So this is talking about someone who is in covenant relationship with him. I love them that love me. You love him, he'll love you. However you deal with God is the way he's going to deal with you. That's why we need to be loving him. And those that seek me early shall find me. He loves those who are loving him, which means he's going to manifest himself to those that are doing his word. And look at this. It's tied into your prosperity. Look what it says in Proverbs 8.21. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Well, that's prosperity and blessing in our life. You love him, you'll inherit substance. He'll fill your treasures. And this is your storehouse. This is finances coming into your hands. Why? Because you love him. You walk after his ways. God will prosper the work of your hands. And he will bring blessings to you if you love him. You can't compromise. We've can't. We got to walk in his ways and be obedient to him in all things. We see over in Daniel chapter 9. Verse 4, I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant mercy to them that love him. Daniel understood this. And to them that keep his commandments. He understood that. That's why God would be able to protect him and deliver him. Remember, he got delivered from things. He got set free. He got delivered out of the, 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 the they threw him in the lion's den. He got out, came out of that. He knew what was necessary. God will deliver you out of anything that comes at you and protect you and keep you, guard you, watch over you, if you will love him, because he will keep covenant and mercy. We go back to John 14. We saw the one who loves him keeps his commandments in verse 15. But then now let's come down to verse 21. He that hath my commandments, he's having my commandments. <laughs> Present tense, continually. Well, that means he's got the word in him. He's hearing and doing it. He's got the commandments. He's got them established in his life. And is keeping them, of course. He has them. He's got them in his mind and heart. He's got the word in him. He's keeping them continually. Ah, that's his lifestyle. He it is that loveth me. 
Loving God is all shown in the measure that you have and you're keeping the commandments of God. And then look what it says. And he that loveth me, the guy who's doing this, shall be loved of my Father. That means the Father's love comes to those who are loving Jesus, who are the ones who are having his commandments and keeping them. Which means you will not be loved by the Father if you're not keeping his commandments. Most every Christian says, does the Father love you? Oh, sure, the Father loves me. <laughs> uh, no, he doesn't if you're not keeping the commandments. Well, he loved me sometime. Yeah, he loved you before you got born again when he sent Jesus to do something about it. But once you came into relationship with him, now what are you doing with his word? If you're not walking after his commandments, you think he still is loving you? No. I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Why isn't God the Father loving and Jesus loving and themselves manifesting themselves to every Christian on the face of the earth? Because they're not loving Jesus. They're not having and keeping his commandments. Verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. If a man is loving me, and this again, present tense, is ongoing, subjunctive mood, conditional statement. If a man may be continually loving me. Now he's meeting the conditions. And how is that? By keeping his commandments. But also it says, he will keep my word. So we keep not only the commandments, but whatever words that Jesus said were to do. And there's many places where it's actually not an imperative mood as a command, but there's statements that he told us to do, such as, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. That's not a commanding statement, but it's a saying. That's his word speaking to us that we're supposed to do it. So that's part of loving him. Same with speaking in new tongues. Same with laying hands on the sick and doing these things. Whatever he says. If a man is maybe loving me, he's going to be keeping, he will keep my words. Future tense. He shall keep my words. And my, what's going to happen then? My Father will love him. Well, the Father, he's not going to love a person until they're keeping the words, are they? And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. What happens when God makes his abode somewhere? There is tremendous blessing. Remember when the Ark of the Covenant, before it came back to Jerusalem, they left it in Obed-Edom's house? And the place was blessed continually, it says, because the presence of God was there. Wherever the presence of God is, the blessing will be there. You say, well, I thought God's presence was in me. Well, he's dwelling in you, but that doesn't mean his presence is manifesting in you unless you do what the Word says. If there was such that it was, it was just because he's dwelling in me, it's manifesting in me, we should be, every one of us should see the blessings just running over and everything that we do. No. We will come unto him and make our abode. And when Jesus and the Father make their abode in you, you're going to see the blessings tremendously coming forth in your life. He's going to manifest himself mightily. Well, the key comes down to keeping his words. We need to be doing it. And then he comes to verse 24, as we saw. He that loveth me not, he's not keeping my sayings. Meaning, if a person is not keeping the word, he's not loving the Lord. Doesn't matter what his thought is, what his attitude is, what his mindset is, what's happened in the past. Well, if you quit keeping the word, well, you're not loving him anymore. It's what we do consistently. That's the key in our life. God wants to do great things. And one of the scriptures we already looked at, but to look at it from the standpoint of what his blessings will come for, the things that he'll bring forth in your life. Those that love him, as we saw in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Eyes, as it's written, eye has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for who? For them that love him. And it's interesting, this word prepared means he's made ready. God provides everything. He makes everything ready. He sets the table for us, a blessing <laughs> for those that love him. God, you think God's holding anything back? He holds nothing back from those that walk uprightly. He wants the blessings to come upon you. He doesn't want to hold anything back. The key is, are we loving him? 
Look at the scripture in 1 Corinthians 8, verse 3. If any man loves God, ah, if someone is loving God, present tense, that's consistency. He's got the walk. He's doing the word, keeping the commandments. The same is known of him. That means, well, I thought God knew, knew everything. He knew me. Well, remember the guy who was walking in lawlessness? He says, I don't know you. We'll show you that for a moment. Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. He said, then I'll profess them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who are working, present tense, ongoing action, lawlessness, which is what the word means. If the guy is, he's not walking in the ways of the Lord anymore, now he's working lawlessness, I don't know you. So who does God know? The ones that are walking in his ways consistently. And this is talking about Christians. You say, well, this, can't, this must be talking about somebody that never was born again. No, because we know, look at this, it says to this, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Well, you can't prophesy in the name of Jesus unless you're born again. You have a revelation of the name. You have the gift of the, you have the Holy Spirit in you and you operate in the gift of prophecy. He said, in thy name of cast out devils. Nobody who's not born again can cast out demons. Remember the seven sons of Sceva tried, tried to do it and they got them clothes torn off and thrown out and ran out wounded and, and destroyed by the enemy. Only ones that are born again that know their authority are casting out demons. In my name done many wonderful works. You can't do anything in the name of Jesus if you're not born again and right with him. So this is talking about Christians, isn't it? And now he says, I never knew you. God knows you by what you're walking after continually in your life. And what was the problem here? These guys were working a lawlessness continually. That's a problem. This is why 1 Corinthians 8, you understand why it says this. If any man is loving God continually, remember? Present tense. I mean, that's what's the key. If you ask any Christian on the street, are you, do you love God continually? Oh, of course I do. Are you doing the word and keeping all his sayings and keeping all his commandments continually? Um, well, because they think loving God is just an attitude. It's not. Loving God is shown by action, by doing the word, keeping his commandments, obeying him. Oh, what's the proof of you? Obedience in all things, isn't it? The same is known of him. In fact, God knows you and he's been knowing you because you've been keeping, you've been loving God continually. It's interesting that this is a perfect tense verb. The perfect tense means action completed in the past with continuing results at the time of speaking. Meaning, the guy who's been continually loving God and for all along, God's known him. He's continually known him continually, and he's knowing him right now because he's continually loving God. I mean, God knows the people who are follow, walking in his ways. Those that aren't walking in his ways, he didn't know them. God wants us to walk in, in love, have love operating towards the Lord at all times. Look what it says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Well, if we're not loving God, is our faith going to work? No. That means if you're abiding in sin, is your faith going to work? No. It's operative, puts forth power. This is the word energeo. It goes into operation, active operation, energized, working by love or more or less through love. It's the word dia, really a better through love, like Young's brings out. Otherwise, if you're not walking in love, no wonder your I wonder why my faith's not doing anything. Well, if we're not walking in love, it's not going to work. It's not going to be active and operative in our life. God wants us to have the love of God established in us that we walk in his ways at all times. Look at Ephesians 3, verse 
16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you be enrooted and grounded in love. You know, that means that's my roots and that's the foundation. I'm stable and established in it. That would be towards God and towards everybody. That's the way you function all the time. You keep the word of God. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what's the breadth, length, and depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ. He wants us to come to know the love of Christ. And if you're going to come to know the love of Christ, this is actively talking about you knowing it. Not like God from God just imparting something to you. You're going to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Who gets filled with the fullness of God? The one who knows the love of Christ. Well, how do they get to the place of knowing the love of Christ? Because they walk in his ways all the time. They do what his word says. Love is, gonna, is a mandatory to grow up. We grow in knowledge, we grow in grace, but look what else it says. Ephesians 4.15, speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head. Actually, this is not the best translation speaking the truth here. Look at Young's brings it out. This is the word, this word truth, it looks like it's a noun, doesn't it? Speaking the truth, that would be a noun, right? It's not a noun. Why they translate it that way beyond me? This is, I put the cursor over the word truth. I'll show you again. This is the word. Is it a noun? No. It's a participle. It's a present tense active participle, verb form. Mean, that's why he translates it, being true in love. Well, who's the one that's true in love? He's walking in line with the Word. He's doing the Word. He's obeying the Word. He's keeping the commandments. We may grow up. This is the word for growing up. Subjunctive mood. Oh, it's got to be conditional, which means you've got to be true in love continually, walking in the love, in the ways of the commandments of the Lord. We may grow up into all things. You can't make yourself grow up. The only way you're going to grow up is through God's working in you through the Word. And how are you going to get to the place of being able to meet the condition to grow up spiritually? It's by being true in love. As you are being true in love, as it says. Or you're, you have the truth coming forth out of you. I like the way Young's translates it. Being true in love. I mean, you're the real deal. You're walking in the truth. You're obeying it. It's going to imply speaking it, doing it, carrying it out. And this is an ongoing thing because it is a participle. It's not a noun there. That's what God wants. Also, the blessings of God, the grace of God is conditional. I've heard me say this before. But many people think, oh, I thought grace was automatic just whenever God wants to pour grace upon me. Nope. Ephesians 6.24, Grace be with all them that love, those that love, our Lord Jesus Christ. It's only for the ones who love the Lord. In sincerity, which is the word purity, it also refers to that which is something that is genuine, essentially, purity, sincerity. Otherwise, they're real, the real deal. So the grace of God, the favor of God, doesn't come to you automatically. It comes because you love the Lord in sincerity. Truly, that's what God wants. We look over in Colossians, chapter 2, verse 2. To them that love him, that your hearts, their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the precise and correct knowledge, not, of, again, this is what the word epigonoso means, to the precise, correct knowledge of the mystery of God. The more you get the precise, correct knowledge of the, rich, of the mystery of God, and you get the full assurance, most certain confidence, this means, of the understanding. You gain the understanding. And how do you get understanding? Because you're hearing and doing the Word. The riches of it. What's going to happen? Your heart's going to be comforted. You're knit together in love unto all these things because you're doing the Word of God. You're walking after the knowledge of God. That's why we've got to get the Word in us. Look what it says over in James. 
chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, who is remaining steadfast in the midst of the temptation. For when he is tried, and we've talked about this before, this is a problem. We have to go back to this. For when he is tried is a poor translation. Why would I say that? Watch. Here's the word for. It's the word hati, which means because. Because. When he is tried, there's two words here. Dokomos, which means about being accepted. The verb is ginamai. See, ginamai, which means become. And it happens to be you know, just uh, a participle here. So this is why Young translates it, because becoming approved or accepted. Why would he become approved and accepted? Because he endured, was steadfast in the midst of the temptation. If you just read this way, it looks like, it looks like he endured the temptation for when he's tried. It doesn't matter whether he got, conquered it or not. No, he's got to become approved, see? What happens to the guy who is approved because he's overcome temptation, essentially? He shall receive Lombano, take hold of the crown of life. And who's that for? Every born-again Christian automatically? No. Which the Lord hath promised to who? Them that love him. Meaning, the crown of life is conditional. Promise. It's not automatic. You ask that, any Christian, they think, well, sure, I'm going to have a crown of life. The Bible says I'm going to get it. Sorry. He promised it to who? Every born-again Christian? No. Them that love him. We see this phrase continually. That's qualifying this, the, who's going to get this promise. He can't take hold of the crown of life unless he's met the, prom, the condition of loving him. And, of course, he's got to become approved in order to be in the position to take the crown of life. That's why becoming approved, he can take hold of the crown of life. Well, if you're not approved and you're yielding to the temptation left and right, which means you're not walking in line with the word, which means you must not be loving him because you're not keeping his commandments and overcoming, you must be yielding to unrighteousness or lawlessness or sin some way. Are you going to be able to take hold of the crown of life? No. This blows most people's doctrines right out the window, you know. I thought the crown of life was guaranteed to me. It's a guaranteed promise for those that meet the conditions. And just because you're tried, the King James really, it makes it, oh, I was tried. Uh, so uh, suppose you were tried, you didn't pass the test. <laughs> Doesn't tell you that, does it? No, it says becoming approved. The one who's been accepted and approved because he's passed the test. That's the guy who's going to be able to take hold of it. Here's another one that's important. All these things show the conditions to those that love him. Look at James 2, verse 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to who? To them that love him. Well, I thought I have this inheritance that belongs to me. Well, it does in Christ, but it's not going to manifest in your life unless you're loving him. It's tied into you walking in line with the word of God. Do the covenant promises have conditions? Sure they do. <laughs> if you do such and such, I'll do such and such. All the promises are conditional. And that's essentially what it's saying. Heirs of the kingdom, to be able to rule and reign, it all's tied into you loving him. Meaning... If you're not loving him, are you going to rule and reign? No, instead it's going to be the opposite. The devil's going to be ruling and reigning over you because you're going to be giving place to him and he's going to be bringing all kinds of destruction because of sin, giving place to the devil. So an heir of the kingdom is and rich in faith of those who are loving him. The ball game comes down to doing what the word says. These are powerful scriptures that we must take heed to and understand. 1 John 2.10, look at this one. He that loveth his brother is loving his brother. Not like I did it once. I'm not loving him anymore. Oh, you're in trouble. Is loving continually his brother. That's why you love people. It doesn't matter what they do to you. 
Well, they were nice yesterday, today they weren't nice. I'm not going to love them. No, you love them all the time. He is abiding in the light. Continually. Present tense. When you're abiding in the light, what's going to happen? There's none occasion of stumbling in him. You're not going to stumble. You're not going to fall. He'll keep you from falling. That means you're going to walk in victory. You're going to be walking in sin whatsoever. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we've passed from death unto life because I'm born again. It doesn't say that, does it? Where did, people added that one in on their own minds, didn't they? Well, I know I passed from death unto life because I'm born again. No, it says, because we are loving continually the brethren. Suppose you're born again, and you're, he that loveth not his brother, you're not loving your brother, and you're born again. Well, it's talking about someone's born again because he's talking about your brother. Someone is a brother in Christ. What about him? Is he passed in death into life? Nope. He is continually abiding in death. We got tremendously false teaching out there on all these areas. How many people are telling you, hey, if you're not walking in love, guess what? You don't have any eternal life. You're abiding in death. <laughs> you don't hear that one going forth everywhere, do you? Or any, hardly anywhere. But this is the Word of God. We've known we pass from death unto life because we are loving the brethren. And if we're not loving the brother, we're abiding in death. Now, how about the guy that has here that he hates his brother? Whoso hateth his brother... Present tense. He's continually to hate his brother. He's a murderer. Because it's all looking at your attitude of heart. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. <laughs> he's sunk. He didn't have eternal life. He's born again, but he didn't have eternal life. People must understand, because you're born again, has not sealed the deal that it's all set and it doesn't matter what I do. That's total deception. It's astounding what people have believed. Hereby perceive we the love of God. He laid down his life for us. We ought to lay down our life for our brethren. Whoso has this world's good, sees his brother have need, shuts up his bowels of compassion upon him. How dwells the love of God in him? It doesn't. My, little, my children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. It's shown in action, isn't it? Not in your intentions. Well, I intended to. Well, I have a good attitude towards. Well, I said so. I thought that. It's going to be shown in action. Hereby we know we're of the truth and sure our hearts before him. If our heart condemn us, and why would our heart condemn us? Because we're not walking in love. Right? In the context. We're not loving our brethren. God's greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, oh, that means I must be loving God and loving one another and loving everybody, then we have confidence toward God. And what's this tied into? Look at the next verse. Whatsoever we, I tell, make a demand to what's due us, we receive lambano of him. Why? Because I'm a born-again Christian. I know how to pray accurately. No. Because we are keeping present tense his commandments, and doing, present tense, the things that are pleasing in his sight. Well, keeping his commandments, doing the things that are pleasing in his sight, shows what? That I'm loving God, doesn't it? That means loving God is tied into prayer, New Testament prayer. Whatsoever you make a demand of what's due you, you take hold of him because you're loving God. You can know how to pray accurately and effectively, and if you're not loving God, it's going nowhere. It's not going to get you anything. Again, it's all tied into, and that's because your heart has got to be right before the Lord. It's tied into answered prayer then, isn't it? 1 John 4, verse 18. Look what it says. There is no fear in love, but perfect love, perfected love, Cast out fear. Why would we have fear? 
because our eyes obviously aren't on the Lord. Because he, does he give us a spirit of fear? No. Of love, power, and a sound mind. Because fear has torment. But he that feareth, he that feareth is not made perfect in love yet. Fear or doubt is a form of fear. Discouragement is a form of fear. Remember, fear not, be not discouraged. That means if we're not in faith, that's because faith worketh by love, remember. If you're not established in love, are you really going to be operating in faith? Some people try to operate in faith when they've got a bunch of doubt and unbelief and fear and anxiety. They're never going to operate in it. You have to be operating in love towards God, keeping His commandments. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. God wants to bring us to the place of perfection in love. And remember, how do we get to the place of becoming perfected in love? In the measure that you keep His word. Whoso, remember what this says, is, might, may be keeping continually. That's the conditional statement. Present tense, ongoing. In Him is the love of God perfected. In fact, it even goes on and says, hereby know we are in Him. That's how you even know you're in Him. Because of the love of God perfected in you, because you're keeping the Word. Because what happens when you do that? He manifests Himself to you. Well, you know you're in Him when He's manifested Himself in your life and you're seeing all these things happen. God is manifesting Himself to you and promises are coming to pass. This is a tremendous message of understanding all these promises and blessings to those that love Him. Otherwise, everything's tied in to us loving Him. Whether it's answered prayer, whether it's mercy, whether it's seeing any promise come to pass, would include our healing, our deliverance, seeing victory come forth in any of these areas, being preserved, being protected, all these things. Prosperity, Him manifesting Himself, loving you. He, I love them that love me. Keeping covenant, seeing any of the covenant promises, seeing the grace of God manifest, seeing your faith work, seeing yourself get filled up with all the fullness of God, not stumbling and falling at all. That's how we can come to the place of never stumbling. He'll keep us from falling, it says, if we walk in all of His ways. See our prayers be answered and be able to take hold of the crown of life. It's all tied into those that love Him. So what that tells you, a priority in our life is to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our being. How do you do it? By putting His Word first place in your life, keeping His commandments, doing what He says, always operating in the Spirit, not giving place to anything contrary to the Word, and you walk in those ways, you're going to see God manifest Himself. Remember, the guy who keeps His words, He it is that loveth me, I will love Him, my Father will love Him, we'll come and manifest, we'll make our abode in Him. When God makes His abode in you, there's going to be tremendous blessing coming your way. Praise God. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank You and praise You for the Word of God that brings revelation that it is imperative that I am loving God. It has nothing to do with an attitude. It has to do with action, keeping the commandments, doing the Word of God, walking in His ways, keeping the words of Jesus. And I see the tremendous blessings that will come to those that love Him. In fact, I see all the covenant promises they're all tied into those that love Him. If I'm not loving Him, I'm not going to see the promises of the blessings coming to pass. But if I am loving Him continually by keeping His words, keeping His commandments, doing what He says, then the blessings are going to come forth in every area of life. I'll see His covenant and His mercy his rewards, His protection, His watching over me, His deliverance, great peace, never getting offended, prospering, inheriting substance, being filled with treasures, seeing Him manifest Himself, known of God, things prepared for me that will be revealed to me. My faith will work. I'll get filled with the fullness of God. I'll grow up in Christ in all things. I'll be knitted together with God 
I will not stumble. I'll pass from death unto life. I'll have my prayers see and be answered as I'm praying accurately. And I'll have my love perfected and all fear will be gone. It'll cast out fear. And I will be heirs of the kingdom. And I'll be able to take hold of the crown of life because I have been found to be one of those that are loving him. I thank you, Lord. I'm setting my life to show forth the validity of my love, the genuineness of it, which is the proof of me being obedient in all things, doing his word, keeping his commandments. I thank you that I commit to walk in line with the word, be a hearer and a doer of it, obey the commandments of God, and show that I truly love him. And when God sees that I love him, the blessings are coming in all areas, and God will manifest himself in my life. Thank you, Lord. I will walk in your commandments and keep your words continually all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You go back over all these scriptures and meditate on these and you see everything is all tied in to you loving him. And again, it's not an attitude. It's all shown by your action and what you do. Make sure you're doing the word. You're operating the spirit all the time. You're not going to get placed any lust or anything in the world or anything that's not of him. Or you're going to take every thought captive. You're not going to yield any kind of sin areas. You're going to do what the word says every time. That's how you walk in victory. Praise God. Father, thank you for all you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of this word, and we will be those who will be shown to be those that love him and see the tremendous promises come to pass in our life. Thank you for much fruit as we hear and do this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.